Hello to my lovely subscribers. It's been another mixed week, weather-wise. I've worn quite a lot of sweet stuff this week, so I have to say it's not been like super hot or anything. It's been, again, quite humid, a bit sweaty. Um, it's kind of weirdly grey. There's a lot of kind of misty... I don't know. It just It's weird because it's hot, but it feels gloomy. You know, it's one of those classic British weather. Um, but this is the only one that I wore this week that's properly f one that I wear when it's really hot. So this was a day when it was just a little bit overwhelming. This is clean, fresh laundry and lavender. It does exactly what it says on the tin. This is a 175ml bottle of the Eau Fraiche. It has an absolutely mega dent in it. Mega for me, specifically. The, the perfumes I get through quickest are lavender ones. I've noticed that, and you guys will notice it, when I finally save up enough bottles to do an empties video. You'll see that a lot of them are lavender, probably like 90% of them are going to be lavender because I wear them to bed. Some of them I also spray on my sheets. I find them really comforting. I'm actually wearing a lavender perfume today as well because it's kind of grey outside. So when I'm recording this, you know, I'm just kind of living in a lot of lavender. And until I'd started my channel, I didn't really know that I was going to love lavender the way I do. And generally, I like quite sweet lavender. But this just has a gentle sweetness. It's not sharp. But it smells like fresh laundry that's been washed with lavender. And this Eau Fraiche, because it is so sort of aquatic, it smells like wet laundry. Now, um, this Eau Fraiche has been discontinued. Let me just put this up here, actually. It's going to cut it off a bit, I think. But we can live with that. Um, but you can, at the moment, on Makeup UK, get a, a new version of this, which is a, a regular clean bottle not one of these massive ones. Um, and it's an eau de toilette, so I feel like they've bought this scent back, but in a slightly stronger concentration. So I've resisted getting that because I do have this massive bottle and obviously it doesn't make sense with a collection the size of mine to get another version of this, but oh, I was tempted, I really wanted it. It's so fresh and beautiful, absolutely lush. I like wearing it on my skin when it's very hot and when it's hot weather, I also like spraying it on my sheets. So it's just an absolute winner all around this scent. The notes, I mean, somehow, altogether, these end up smelling like wet laundry that's been done with a lavender detergent. But, uh, I mean, the notes don't make any sense to me. So it says fruity notes and pineapple in the top. Don't really sense those. Middle notes, lavender, green grass, orchid, night blooming jasmine and star anise. Okay. I mean, lavender, yes, but I guess the rest are just making it smell a bit like a laundry fresh scent. Um, base notes, musk, tonka bean, amber, precious woods, patchouli. Again, not really getting much of that. But I do feel like there's enough tonka bean in here to stop that lavender going kind of too masculine or too um, uh, kind of sharp or too herbaceous. You know, it's just really nicely balanced, this one. I love it. I just love lavender. And actually, before I forget, speaking of lavender, I did smell the Marks and Spencer's lavender and they are in beautiful bottles. I sprayed some on my hand, but I sprayed so many things on my hand when I was in M&S that I then couldn't quite remember which dry down it was because it was so beautiful when I first sprayed it. Um, and then I kind of forgot which one was which, but one of the things I sprayed on me went a bit masculine. So I'm going to have to try that again. But yeah, it, I love the bottle. And they're so like affordable. I think they're maybe £12 or something for either a 50 or a 100 mil. I can't remember, but they're really pretty bottles at the moment. I really liked what I could smell when I remembered which one it was. So um, I might have to revisit that because I do love me a lavender. I can't resist. Okay. I hope you saw my Lush vid. Um, if you didn't, I, I took Passion and Lemony Flutter back to Lush because those were just not for me and to the point where like the passion one I much preferred on like card and in the bottle it doesn't smell so good on my skin so I didn't want to take a decant and then sell it on so I just took them back to Lush uh, full for a refund and I kept Space Girl and Grape Soda and whoo let me just spray this out it's gonna be so delicious oh my god mmm this is so yummy. Um, absolutely lush. Space Girl is lovely. I saw someone saying it smelled a bit like berries, which is interesting because now in my head I'm like, does it smell a bit like berries? 
I guess maybe a little bit. But I still get like a citrusy cake smell out of this more so than berries. But now again, like maybe maybe a lemon and blueberry cake. Maybe that would be it. Something like that. This is absolutely delicious. And <laughs> funnily enough, if you watch that video, you would have seen me say this is my husband's least favorite of those four when we were smelling them because he was there when it arrived so I unboxed them and I was smelling them and having my little feelings and then I'd give him the bit of paper I'd sprayed it on and he gave me his opinion this one he was like oh it's too gourmand I said it smells like a lemon cake and he was like oh yeah I just don't like these gourmands it, again if you've seen any of our videos where he smells gourmands he's like sorry guys there's an absolute fool driving up and down my street on a on a some kind of moped or something that really sounds like it's exhaust is about to fall off anyway i will continue from that distraction he doesn't like them he always just says why would you want to smell like a cake why would you want to smell like a muffin but i want to smell sometimes like not too much of a realistic muffin um <laughs> and this does give me yeah i mean now i'm smelling it again yeah, maybe I can see there's a bit of a berry vibe here. So maybe this colour is a bit more accurate than I thought um, initially. But it's definitely citrusy to me. It's definitely got that classic lush citrusy thing, but without the bitterness. And then the almond in here. Because what do they give you for notes? Um, fizzy. Okay, what does it actually say? I think this one, yeah, grapefruit. It's got that kind of nice, sweet, pink grapefruitiness, with, again, without too much bitterness bergamot, uh, geranial, and then it's got almond in here. And yeah, there it is, almond essential oil. So it has a creamy cakiness to it, it's just delicious. Now, so he said, I don't, I, I don't really like that. The day I wore it, as soon as I got near him, he smells, you smell delicious. So there you go. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't translate so well on paper as it does when it's on your skin warmed up. Maybe he just thinks every. I mean, he has said before, most things on me he thinks smells good. I think he just thinks I normally smell good. Um, but yeah, it, he gave me a compliment on this one. So despite it being his least favourite, it's the only lush one in a long time that he's given me an actual compliment on when I've been wearing it. So there you go. It's absolutely lush. I mean, I think a lot of people are going to like Space Girl. So if it's still available... It's excellent. It, the longevity is, it's not like amazing, but again, as with all the lush body sprays nowadays, if you get them on your clothes, they'll last for quite a while. I also wore, so bear in mind, I love this. I am obsessed with grape soda. Grape soda is by far my favorite. I can smell this all over my room, even though I wore it many days ago. This is the one I can smell from the nozzle when I open my um, cupboard where it is. I am obsessed with this. It definitely does have some crossovers with the comforter, but I like it so much better. There's something about the comforter that I don't find comforting to actually wear. I've said before and in that video, love it on other people, love it in the air but I don't like it on me. This one I love on me. I'm obsessed. It's so delicious. It really does smell. I mean, grape soda, yes, but because it's a bit watery, almost like a grape juice, but a not entirely natural grape juice. So not an M&S grape juice. I'm talking about like the American grape juices that are actually purple, you know, rather than being a natural kind of ready color. Um, and then it's got this sweet dry down this lasts for eternity on clothes so that's what I'm saying I can smell it all over my room because the day that I wore it I sprayed it on everything um all over my clothes all over my skin although let me just say because I took some to work with me I put it in this little Shein like decant bottle and this is the color of the actual juice so be a little bit careful if you're spraying this on white I was wearing colored clothing that day so it wasn't a problem but yeah um I've seen the color of this now so I'd say you can kind of see the color of this on your skin a little bit so if you're wearing like proper white be very careful where you spray this I'd spray it on skin like quite a lot and then put clothes over the, over the top you know I mean, and obviously that's the same with like sticky dates and stuff. Some of these. Oh my God, this is so delicious. I absolutely, I, 
I am so obsessed with this grape soda. I, this is the one when I first got them all that I just sprayed all over myself. And then I wore it properly. I wore it to work. I resprayed it. I kept respraying in the evening. Um, like I said, this lasts for ages on hair and clothes, fabrics, and just generally in the air. It's not quite so long on skin. So like every three or four hours, I was quite tempted to put a little bit more on, but partly just because I'm so obsessed with it. It's so juicy and so tasty, and I don't really have anything like this, but I kind of feel, <laughs> this might sound ridiculous, but one of the reasons that I love um, Dior Poison so much is that it has, a, th there's something about the plum, the honeyed plum in that, with the tuberose that's a bit bubblegummy, that creates a kind of grapey smell. And I, I love that so much about Poison. But Poison is like a big smell. It's a big perfume. It's quite 80s. And even the dupe I've got, much more watered down. Easier to deal with just generally. But it does retain that fruity, grapey yumminess. This is kind of like, if you can imagine, if you imagine Jessica Rabbit, like the Toontown version of Poison, then that's kind of, you know, like, the kids version of poison, the cartoon version of poison, where you haven't got the smoky stuff, you don't have the woods, you don't have all the heavy notes that make it kind of a proper perfume. You've got one that just smells like the yummy grapiness from it and the sweetness in the dry down. Oh, I literally can't get enough of this to the point that where I when I went back to get a refund, I was this close to getting a backup of, of this. But it's 200 mil, so I'd be insane to do that because I have a massive collection. But I have wanted to wear this every time I walk into my room and I can get a whiff of this on my sheets or wherever it hits, wherever it landed. Every time I've taken my hair down, because I didn't spray it directly in my hair, but obviously like when I'm spraying it on my neck and stuff, it gets on my hair. And then I swish my hair and I can smell it. I put my hair up. Um, I take it down from a bum. I can... Uh, bun. A <laughs> bun. I took it down from a bun, not a bum, um, and I could smell it and I wanted to wear it again. And then I went and I showered and I washed my hair and I could still smell it in my hair. It's incredible. I mean, it will drive you mad if you don't like it. So make sure, you know, that you like it before you spray it all over you. But I, c I actually can't get enough. And if they don't make this permanent, I'm going to be furious. <laughs> I genuinely... Uh, some of the things that they've got in their permanent body sprays, some of the things that they've brought out recently that are now permanent in their perfume collection, these two are so much better than some of them. I think that they're really mass appealing. They're really fun. I would be so sad if they don't keep these. Um, I, you know, I know everyone's obsessed with sticky dates, but I would totally choose these over sticky dates any day. Like, Anyway, I've been going on for ages, but I cannot tell you how much I love this. Well, I can and I just did, but <laughs> I'm obsessed. Yeah, if you don't like kind of artificial grape smells, you're going to hate it. But if like me, you do, oh my God, you're going to love it. Um, and the notes, I don't think they give you many notes for this. Oh, of course, this is this is one of the juniper oil and wild orange ones where you're like, how does it smell like this? I don't know. Um, but yeah, it has a sweet, delicious creaminess, a lovely, juicy fruitiness. It is heaven and I love it. And I don't know, I'm, st I'm, st I mean, I, I don't, ugh. every part of me is thinking, what if they don't make this again? Maybe I should get a backup. I don't know. I mean, I don't need a backup, but I also feel a bit mental about it because I'm so in love at the moment. But, you know, that might just be recency bias, but, but I do actually think I love it. And quickly, while I'm talking about this, when I was in Lush, I smelt their... I think it's now called Once Upon a Time and it used to be called So White. I said last time I thought it was called Snow White, um, but I think it was called So White. And I guess they changed that because it could be taken out of context. Um, but it's basically an apple perfume. Um, it's got apple, bergamot, rose, neroli and Brazilian orange in it, apparently, according to Fragrantica. It really smells like apples. And um, I, I wouldn't want to wear it because it's like a green apple smell. Um, it's definitely got some similarities to the Shrek one that came out recently. I'm not sure that they're exactly the same because I remember the Shrek one smelling like cucumber and a bit kind of swampy, but then drying down into something that has like a bit of mango. But it's almost like it's on the base of this So White one. It's kind of got some similar similarities, I think, in terms of how they smell. 
But like I said, I don't remember the same. Um, but I really nearly bought this just because I think I'd love it on my sheets and around my house because it smells it smells very similar to the Yankee Candle beans wax I think it was called that I had that was called like orchard um and that one has a kind of apple apple blossom really natural smell to it that I absolutely adored that candle I loved it and I don't really burn candles because the smokiness makes me feel a bit queasy and it makes me cough um but just having it open in my house I loved the smell of that candle so I'm still thinking that maybe I will buy it as a room spray rather than a body spray because I do love how it smells. I just really struggle to actually wear things that have green apple in because so often they remind me of candles and I don't actually like smelling like a candle myself. But it's beautiful. It's a really nice one. And if you like green apple, I think you'd love um, Once Upon a Time, it's called now. You can get it in the flagship. Um, so you can get it in Oxford Circus. I imagine they have it in the new perfume shop, of uh, um, which I'm hopefully going to go to this week because I've got some time off. So I'm going to see if I can find time to go into Central to go to the perfume shop in Soho, the lush one, the boutique, the lush boutique. Um, yeah, I, but you can get it online, I think now. All right, next up. I've done these in a weird order today, haven't I? This is so pretty. It's also quite a weird perfume. Um, so this is Belle de Grasse from Fragonar. I got this from Marks and Spencer's a while back. I spent a whole £40 on this, but it is a very big bottle. Um, occasionally they have some, and I'll talk about one because I need to do a big haul video because I've been slowly but surely over the last few months buying little bits and pieces, like little affordable perfumes. And I haven't got around to doing like smaller hauls, so I'm just going to have to do a mammoth one. But yeah, I um I couldn't find this for cheaper than full price basically anywhere, so I just bought it. But this is a mimosa perfume. <sighs> See, and now from the bottle, you get what this smells like in the dry down. So in the dry down, it's sweet. You get lilac and mimosa. Um, in the top of Belle de Grasse, when you first spray it, I mean, it literally smells like leaves and grass it's got a very natural green kind of leafy out in a field smell to it which personally I quite like but I think could be a bit challenging for some people but then when it dries down and you get this powdery mimosa you get this beautiful lilac there's a bit of orange blossom but I'm not really sure how much I get a sense for that you've got musk and heliotrope in the base so you've got this sweetness. It's, it just smells like springtime. It gets it gets more feminine and sweeter in the dry down. And then in the top, it's got this slightly strange greenness to it. Um, so yeah, if you don't like green stuff and you smell this one at first, you might not like it. But then it moves on to be one of the prettiest and most feminine floral perfumes I think I've ever smelled. Like, and it's it's really noticeable despite feeling delicate. It feels delicate and innocent. I mean, what even is innocent? But if you see what I mean, it has that feel about it. Like you could imagine like a young lady wearing it, but it's not the kind of perfect, but, but not because it smells immature. Do you know what I mean? It's not like, oh, you know, everyone smells like Ariana Grande or whatever. It's not that kind of youthful smell. It's like innocent, pretty, simple, yummy it's just lovely um so yeah it's got violet leaf and bergamot in the top which is probably where that greenness is coming from and i don't know much about mimosa in real real life but it's very possible that also has quite a unique greenness to it but i just think belle de grass from fragonard is gorgeous it's so pretty it is once it's dried down it is quite linear so it does start with that slightly unusual greenness but then when it turns into like I said what you can smell from the cap so what it dries down into which is a sweeter mimosa smell with a lilac -y feel as well um then I, then I think it, it's very linear after that that's just what you get and it lasts it lasts for ages on clothes maybe like four to six hours this is an eau de toilette um what does it say uh, hmm. does it not say no it doesn't say it feels like an eau de toilette I would make a bet it's an eau de toilette it probably says on the box but it doesn't say on here but I um 
Fragonard, I think, has a bit of a DNA. I, I've actually got another one to talk about when I do a haul video. So, yeah, I mean, it definitely has a bit of a Fragonard DNA from what I've smelt. I also had a quick sniff of their... What's it called? It's like jasmine perfume. Some kind of jasmine perfume. And I wasn't mad for it. I know someone in my comments mentioned it. It's very pretty. Is it jasmine and tea or something? Jasmine and citrus, I think it is, but um, it has a it has a jasmine and something. But it's in it's in like one of the squat bottles, one of the sort of that sh you know that shape. Um, uh, it was just a bit too sharp and citrusy for me. I just didn't. But I'm very fussy about jasmine. But I did have a quick sniff of that when I was in Marks and Spencers as well. All right, guys, I'm excited about this. I don't know why I try to sniff this from the cap. You cannot smell this from the cap. It's completely invisible. The absolute beauty that is Valentino Donna Aqua. The only Valentino perfume I've ever smelled that I actually like. And I have smelled the new one. And again, I need to make a video of um, the little samples that I got to smell of like hyped up perfumes or new perfumes. I will do that as soon as I can. Like I said, I've got some time off this week. So when I get time, I'll make some videos. But yeah, this one, um, it's fabled, it's famous. Uh, a lot of YouTube perfume reviewers uh, love this. I am also one of them. I got a little sample of this to see what everyone was talking about. And it is absolutely one of the most beautiful, delicious, sweet perfumes I've smelled. It's pears. It's uh, frangipani. Uh, or is it frangipan? How do you say it? Um, can't remember. Almond. It's just so pretty. It is heavenly and delicious. I keep sniffing it even though I can't smell it. So I'm just going to put it here. And the other thing about it that I quite like is it's incredibly sweet. But you can pretty much wear it any time of year. Like I wore this recently on a hot day and it smelled delicious. The reason I was wearing it. Um, oh, hang on. Let me give you the notes first. Um, so carded sample. I always read it from the carded sample because um, the notes on for Grandica aren't the same as what it says on the carded sample that I had. So it says green almond, frosted pear, frangipani, rose accord and roasted tonka bean. And it smells like that. It's absolutely lush, ridiculously so. So nowhere except one place does a dupe of this. And I've been putting off getting anything because it's coming from uh, the Middle East somewhere. So it's quite expensive to get things shipped over. But I finally caved because they have dupes of three perfumes that I haven't seen dupes of elsewhere so I thought okay I'm gonna get this oil version so this is from generic perfumes so my experience with generic perfumes so far has been that they're absolutely excellent because I and I don't have any sprays but I'm probably going to get a spray version of this. And I have to hope they don't put any aroma chemicals in that aren't in the perfume, you know, in order to make it last longer. But I got the oil from Generic Perfumes. Now, if you get, I, I ordered three five mil oils and the postage was £16 something, but it came within like three days. Like it was so, it was like very expedited shipping. It was super quick. They came in really good condition. They came exactly when they said they were going to come. Um, and they've come from the other, like so far away from me. So that's really impressive and therefore worth the postage. Um, but if you have more than three items in your cart, then it's going to go up to like 21. And then I think the more you put in, the more expensive the postage. But as you can see, this is Donna Aqua for women. Um, A367 from Generic Perfumes. These are the little rollerballs you get. And this, I feel like this one at first feels like it's got a tiny bit more pear, but it dries down to smell almost identical to this. Like this is the one to go for. So anyone who wants Donna Aqua and can't get it, which is, let's be real, nearly everyone, or anyone who has it and loves it and can't get a backup, then I think generic perfumes, they're their dupe is amazing so the oil I have to say is beautiful I don't think it lasts a huge amount longer than this spray because I tried this one out and then I was so obsessed with smelling this again I had to wear this for the rest of the day because I just I, I love this perfume that much it's very sweet but it's perfect um an almond and pear 
floral heaven um almost gourmand in its sweetness it is really beautiful i feel like at first and i've said it before there is a slight crossover with how i feel about wearing god is a woman from ariana grande but only only the body spray because the perfume has so much of the aroma chemical that smells like tar in it don't get so much of that or if any in the in the body sprays so this one in a way has a little bit of the pear from that but then when it dries down it honestly smells exactly like donna aqua it's so delicious so i might get a spray of this because i think they're like 30 30 something pounds for 100 ml bottles and the thing i love about this is like i said you can wear it any time of year it's absolutely delicious donna aqua is gorgeous any time of year but it doesn't last very long and it's not very strong so what i want and what you need to do really is spray so much of it on and you need to keep respraying it all the time so i have this bottle i actually managed to get hold of a backup bottle but i think it's smaller than this i think is that a 50 mil and i've got a 30 mil backup um and i also had the little miniature that i've put into a spray bottle to take with me to work but i think if i wore it as much as i wanted to and i sprayed as much as i wanted to and i resprayed it as much as i wanted to i would hammer through this quite quickly so what i'm thinking is this because it's in such a beautiful bottle let's be real this can be one that i like put on in the morning or i um wear at home and then i could get the generic one to just go absolutely ham with because it is so good so yeah i think i'm probably going to order um yeah a spray bottle of this from generic and and then i it gives me a good excuse to get a couple of other dupes because i know they do so that I, I won't review them now but I also got a dupe for Ylang-Ying Gold and I got Jasmine's Marzipan which is that really expensive Lan Lancome one from their like special range of those beautiful bottles uh, but they also do the Dior Poison Elixir they do a dupe of that they've got the dupes for the other like hypnotic poison the specials that you can't get like the secret one and there's a essential one, I think. So they do quite a few good discontinued or limited edition like dupes. So I'll find a couple that I'm interested in. I really want a dupe of Hugo Boss Purple because that's compared to this as well. Um, so yeah, I I will get a few more and I'll probably get the spray of this because yeah, really good. And I think Jess told me that she she liked this brand and she had quite a few from there. So like I, I'd said to her, like I was just it's it's a bit of a risk when it's so expensive to get things shipped over because the perfumes themselves are not expensive but with the shipping being that fast totally worth it absolutely worth it um and to be honest both of those other dupes are really good as well but i will do a proper review of those at some point i'll probably wait until i get that and then like you know i'll do a big review of this of this particular dupe house super impressed so far all right where was i I'm talking for ages oh yeah again I wear it all the time <sighs> it's another one that makes me really happy there's something unisex in this because it's quite woody so this would smell amazing on my husband too and when he was smelling my perfumes he chose this as one of his favorite and he said you know am i choosing what i'd like on you or am i choosing what i'd wear myself because i think he would happily wear this himself and i think he'd smell absolutely lush in it guest air the original guest air totally scrumptious and delicious and lovely it's kumquat, pear blossom, lemon blossom in the top. Middle notes of cactus flower, jasmine and wild rose. Base notes, musk, coconut, woody notes. It's not coconutty, but it's got the combination of coconut and musk makes it super creamy like a bar soap. Beautiful kumquat note, a little bit floral, smells a bit like spring, but there's a decent amount of wood there. So I think the, the woodiness here is what turns this into not... It smells feminine, but not in a girly way, if you see what I mean. It smells like grown up, quite feminine, I think, this one um but also could definitely smell amazing on men like super unisex overall but yeah i mean i love wearing this one it's one of my faves you can tell from the dent right it speaks for itself this was full when i got it absolutely love it um what was i gonna say is this the same this is the same perfumer i think who did ck into you that one that everyone loved for a little while and um i only had to get rid of that because it has that tarry woody scent in it unfortunately for me um 
And I wondered when I first had it why I found it a little bit difficult to wear. And the longer I like the longer it was on my skin, the more I found it a bit difficult to wear. And that is because it has that aroma chemical in it. But uh, apart from that aroma chemical, I love that. It's like a kind of slightly piney, woody, citrusy vanilla. It's really pretty. Quite, I think that one's quite musky as well. I feel like maybe that one has cactus in it as well. So maybe this perfumer was going through a cactus phase. But I, oh uh, yeah, I love Guest Air. I think it's amazing. Um, I also wore, all right, let me just find the notes of this because it's not on Fragrantica. Still, um, this has been out for quite a while. I don't know why it's not on Fragrantica. So this is Miss Cassandra Eau de Parfum. Um, this was in my Jeanne Arthez haul, the last one that I put up. So it's still in the box because I'm probably not going to keep this. I do like it. It just doesn't feel like me. So I gave it a full day's wear test because I sprayed it. I kept spraying it on my skin and I'd like sniffing it because it kind of turns into a vanilla when it dries down. And I do, I like it. I like it at all stages. But when I was wearing it, I felt like I was wearing someone else's perfume. I felt like I didn't smell like myself. And that just happens sometimes. There's some things that I think I appreciate on other people, but they just don't feel like me. Um, it is very vanilla. It's very full of vanilla, this one. So Miss Cassandra, I am pretty sure, is based on, I think it's the 2021 maybe version. I'm going to have to find a, a place where you can actually see the... Yeah, it's a weird angle, but... Um, Miss Dior 2021, I think. And someone commented on that video and said, yeah, that she has the Miss Dior and this one and they do smell very, very similar um, and that she loves them both. And I can totally see why. And she said as well that this dries down to a vanilla and it totally does dry down to a vanilla. So the notes here are bergamot, peony and pink pepper in the top, powdery notes, rose and iris in the mid, musk, sandalwood and vanilla in the base. I get a real fruitiness here um a peony rose and iris maybe a little bit of all of those to be honest the peony isn't too screechy for me which is nice it's very sweet it's a little bit musky um and unlike some of the other misty ores that i've smelled it doesn't just smell kind of it doesn't entirely smell just like floral but it also doesn't have the old school floral and patchouli vibe going on too much but i feel like it's enough in that realm of kind of what was popular when you would have fruit chulies. Um, even though I don't think this literally smells like a fruit chuli, I feel like it's missing the patchouli bit that would really make this a problem for me. But I think it's enough in that realm of scent that it just doesn't feel comfortable for me. It doesn't feel like me. But it's also super pretty. So I would massively recommend it to anyone who enjoys the Miss Dior perfumes. I think it's like an, such an affordable one. And when it dries down to the vanilla, the vanilla lasts on your skin forever. Um, so not too bad, to be honest. I, it's very pretty. I think it's really pretty. It's just not quite for me. Let's see. Where did I get to? So the next one. Oh, this was just a sample. Because I was watching the scented... Um, I really like watching her videos. Um, let me just spray this out actually so I can properly talk about it. Let me put some on my arm. Um, if I've got any left. The, the problem with the Guerlain, um, uh, samples is they're not even a mill. It's like they don't really want you to experience them properly. It's very ungenerous because they've got these massive things. They're like, they're big, but they've only got, what was it? 0.7 or something in it so ungenerous yeah 0 0.7 mils ridiculous this is bloom of rose eau de toilette so i'd re I, I had a bottle because i got it on ebay of the bloom of rose eau de parfum and i really didn't like that i much preferred this one and um the scented was talking about this and she really loves this she thinks it's really good for summer i totally agree I do actually really like this one. I think it's got just enough of the DNA of the original Mongolian that you do get a little bit of that lavendery yumminess, but it's much fresher, brighter, tartar. It's pretty, this one. I like it. So I just wanted to try it out because I saw a tester bottle of this on eBay for like 40 quid and it's 100 mil. And I was like, oh, that's good. But I also wanted to compare it to my... Um, 
Mongiel on Sparkling Bouquet because I have a, a bottle of that and I really like that one. And that is the one that I'm like, well, I can just wear that in warmer weather. This one is even kind of sheerer, not as sweet. It's a bit tartar. So in a way, even better for hot weather than Sparkling Bouquet. But I, I love Sparkling Bouquet. I love the pear in that a lot. So I'm still thinking about this. I think maybe if I see a smaller bottle of this for like cheap at any point, I might have to pick one up because you do see Bloom of Rose EDT quite a lot. But I think um, it's super pretty. I really like it. And there's a few of the Mongolans that I don't really like very much. And they tend to go a little bit icky on my skin. And it's normally like the jasmine if there's too much jasmine. But this one's got quite a nice balance. There's something about the neroli in here. So, and I also don't normally like neroli, but it works here. So you've got citrus and lavender in the top. So you definitely get that lavender. That beautiful Mongolian lavender. Oh, see, now I'm smelling it today and I'm like, oh, I would definitely wear this. Um, the middle notes, neroli, Bulgarian, rose and jasmine sandback. I really don't like the jasmine sandback in the Mongolian range when it gets too strong. So... There, I can't, which ones were it? I think Floral, that one has quite a lot of that. The the Bloom of Rose, I didn't like that one. The EDT has too much of that jasmine. Um, and that really turned, it smelled like a urinal cake on me. It really did. It just not good. Um, but I feel like the Rose, the Lavender and the Neroli are stronger than the jasmine here. And they're kind of blanking out that jasmine a bit, which is good. And then the base notes are Tahitian vanilla and sandalwood. And you do get a decent amount of vanilla that stops it going too sharp. It's just very pretty. Yeah, I'm gosh, smelling it again. The problem is when I compared it to Sparkling Bouquet, which is even sweeter, it made this one feel a bit sharp. But smelling it away from that one this doesn't smell so sharp anymore it just smells delicious so yeah if i see a good a, i don't know that i need a 100 ml bottle of it but if i can see like a 30 ml or a 50 maybe i'll have to pick it up because yeah i think you could really get away with wearing this in quite hot weather sparkling bouquet is still quite sweet so you know you, you you can still wear it in warmer weather but maybe it would be a little bit too sweet for super hot weather i think you could get away with wearing this one in super hot weather it's so pretty really sort of feminine but without being ridiculous again like without being like super youthful or generic it has that just that essence of mongolian and i am so obsessed with that smell <laughs> like that's the thing the things i wear the most now are things that smell a little bit like mongolian and um anything that I mean at the moment I just want to wear this one at the moment <laughs> that's what I want to wear I would happily wear this and this and any version of these like all the time <laughs> I'm just obsessed all right I also smelt some stuff in um, where was it um, John Lewis I went in again to see if they had Burberry Goddess Intense. They don't seem to have that anywhere in the UK. I don't understand where people are smelling it because there's a lot of reviews of it already. And a lot of people are not loving the patchouli in that. And when I saw it had patchouli in it, I did think, I wonder if they'll have taken what I love about the original and totally ruined it for me. <laughs> I mean, it, if they do, good, because it means I'm not going to want to buy it, um, <laughs> which is good because they're stupidly expensive. Although, as you can probably see, like you can get the original Goddess for way cheaper now and you can get it on the grey market quite easily. But yeah, I, I'd really like to smell that, but it, they didn't have it. So I went and had a little mooch around. I was like, oh, what else is there going to be? And I smelt one that I've been wanting to smell for ages, which is CK Everyone. And they, this was so weird. They only had boxes of the EDT version of CK Everyone, but they only had a tester bottle of the EDP version of Everyone, which is very silly. <laughs> but anyway, um, they had top note. It, this says it has top notes of orange, middle notes of black tea and base notes of Haitian vetiver. Now, vetiver is the thing that often causes me problems in perfumes and makes them smell masculine on my skin because there's something about the vetiver note that on my skin gets so amplified that it starts to smell a bit like a cologne -y kind of masculine scent um 
you know, in a traditional sense, obviously, some women smell amazing in this kind of thing, but my skin makes it just smell a bit brutish, you know. So, but I love orange and I love black tea, so I wanted to smell it. Now, there's way more going on in this perfume than those three notes. Those three notes are, you know, maybe the things they want us to smell, but there's a lot going on here. It's been compared to, is it the male version of Aqua de Joy or something like that? And it's also been compared to CKB. I remember smelling CKB when I was younger and thinking that that one definitely lent a little bit to kind of classically masculine for me. But nearly all of the CK perfumes, the CK1 perfumes, smell a little bit too masculine for me. And this one, it was really pretty. It was very fleeting despite it, despite it being a perfume, apparently. Um, and it smelled quite nice, but it was a classic freshy. I didn't like fall in love with it or anything, but it's super nice. It's one that I could probably wear, but I wouldn't love. But I'd love how this smell on my husband, I think. So that one was pretty. And then... All right, let's talk about, I finally got to smell Eternity by Calvin Klein because I've been in John Lewis before and I've never seen like the, a little Calvin Klein area. I feel like they have a little area where sometimes they have, um, not Hugo Boss because, oh, Ralph Lauren. Sometimes there's Ralph Lauren there. Sometimes there's other like bits and pieces, but this time there was quite a few CK perfumes. So Calvin Klein and they had the original Eternity and I've never, to my knowledge, smelt that perfume before. So I smelt it and it smelt like the 90s, <laughs> really genuinely. The thing that it made me think of the most is Eau de Issy. Um, and I'm not, I'm not sure that it actually smells like that. But it, what I mean is it was in that kind of general realm of smelling like the 90s it's quite floral it's quite, it's got a fruitiness a slight tanginess it's a little bit sharp for me in areas um it's not really my kind of perfume i can't get along with load of issy either they smell like if they if they if they both had both cologne and ambroxan in i would not be surprised um they both have this kind of tingly nose thing and like eye watering thing that i get with some aroma chemicals um, and I don't think I get on very well with cologne, which is that one that smells a bit melony most of the time, especially if there's not lots of it. So, yeah, I wasn't I mean, I thought it was quite pretty, but it wasn't me. Again, it wasn't my kind of style. And then I smelt one. I've actually still got this one on a strip. Sadly, I lost one of the other strips, which is very annoying. Um, and I'm very confused about this because it's in an orange bottle and it said the word intense on it. <laughs> But the original Calvin Klein Eternity Intense is in a diff is not in an orange bottle and the notes didn't make really any sense. So I carried on looking and I went and found the bottles and then there's one called, which is a newer one, which makes more sense for being in the shops, right? That's Eternity Eau de Parfum Intense for Women in a lovely kind of almost peachy, orangey coloured bottle. And this one, there is something I really enjoy about this. It's only giving three notes. I don't believe it for a second. This smells quite complex to me. And it, it went through like quite a few different stages. So it only says top notes, Turkish rose, middle middle notes, shiswan, pepper. Sorry about my pronunci pronunciation. Um, base notes, jasmine, sandback. So this does not seem like the sort of perfume I would enjoy. And when I smell it, again, I'm getting something almost melony. It's very fruity. It was much more fruity and sweeter than the original when I sprayed it out. And now what's... And then it kind of went through a stage of feeling a little bit screechy, a little bit... Mm, don't know if I'd be able to wear that. And what's left has a slightly florally melony scent. But it's really pretty. Yeah, whatever is in this, and hopefully it is actually the Eau de Parfum Intense, like I said... The, the bottle looks right and it makes sense for the release date that they would have the original and then like two of the recent flankers with this collection because I don't think they'd have ones that don't seem to be in production anymore um it's very pretty it's really nice it seems like if you like the original eternity I think the eau de parfum intense would be extremely wearable really really pretty I'd quite I, I'd, I'd quite like to see if I can get a sample of this, but they seem to be quite hard to come across. But maybe if I get to go back in there at some point, I'll actually try it on my skin and see how it comes out. 
And then I also smell and I'm so annoyed. I pulled my phone out of my pocket and obviously the sample card because like I've still got this one for the Eternity Intense, even though this is a Floral Street one because with the with the more affordable perfumes, they don't even bother to give you strips, even though they have testers. Thanks, John Lewis. Um, I mean, talk about telling us what they think of us the people who like, who like more affordable perfumes they're like i guess we'll give you a tester but you can just spray it on your skin you don't get to spray it on a card and take it with you um anyway <laughs> sorry i just went off on one a little bit there so the the other one i smell is eternity aromatic essence that's the one in the kind of turquoisey blue um bottle and it's, uh, I've seen it advertised because it's the Elbers. It's like Idris Elba and his wife. I apologise, I don't know her name. Um, I don't really know of her work, except I think that they do a podcast together. But yeah, so I, I know Idris Elba, obviously, because he's been a, an actor famous in the UK forever. Um, and it matches, the smell of it matches the bottle, which is nice because the last time I got a turquoise bottle, it didn't smell at all how I expected it to. The notes in this one... Top notes of aqual, whatever that is. I assume it's an aroma chemical that's supposed to smell, aqu smell aquatic. Um, lavender, lime, ambrette. So, so far, with the exception of aqual, which I'm like, I don't really know about. Lavender, lime and ambrette. Yes, please. Middle notes, coconut water, salt and peony and blackcurrant. Coconut water, yes, please. Peony and salt can be awful. Blackcurrant, one of my favourite notes. Base notes, sandalwood. This one is yummy and again I really need to try and get a, a sample of this to smell because people were saying that they really liked it but then it dries down to be really synthetic. I kept smelling it on the paper and being like I feel like it reminds me of the one I had to get rid of from Oriflame. I had one from Oriflame called Elixir Crystal I think it was called which was in again a beautiful turquoise bottle and it was coconut and tonka bean I think it was and it was salty and it was fruity and it was just so pretty but it had that aroma chemical in it that smells like tar so I couldn't wear it so I think I did I give that one to my friend I think I might have given that to Fern because she was on her coconut kick and it's so pretty I loved it I was gutted that I couldn't wear it this one kind of reminds me of that it has a real genuine sweetness it has a slightly salty seawater smell it's coconutty and then it has this fruitiness but it also has this kind of slight musky vibe and a tiny tiny bit of that floral and lavender so it's slightly aromatic it's like floral there's a lot going on I feel like it's like the eternity version of something like Olympia but it's nowhere near as sickly it's not quite as beachy it's a bit fresher so I quite liked it. I've never seen anyone talking about it. Um, but yeah, I thought it was kind of pretty. So I'd, I think I'm going to have to try that one on my skin as well to see whether it's something I could wear, to see whether it's something that dries down to still smell nice, you know, or whether it's a bit weird. Um, but yeah, I, 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 was really, I was really impressed with the Internity line, even though the original isn't for me. I think they seem like they'd be excellent value perfumes. Like I can still smell the eau de parfum intense so clearly on here after like it's been like two and a half days yeah it's weird i'm definitely still getting a little bit of that load of issy kind of melaniness but less screechy kind of softer yeah it's really weird the notes don't the notes for this version and the notes for the just normal intense one in the different colored bottle Neither of them seem to make sense for what I think I'm smelling here, but that's sometimes the way with perfumes. Anyway, thank you again for, for everyone who subscribes. If you're not already subscribed to me and you like my videos, please do subscribe. It makes a massive difference to me. Let me know what you guys have been wearing. Let me know if you have any of these. Let me know if you have Bloom of Rose and what you think about it and if you wear it often. Oh, and let me know if you've got any perfumes from Generic. Um... Yes, actually, I should put that in there, shouldn't I, for the picture? So, generic perfumes, because... Actually, let me just move these. Maybe I can just move that one that way and put that one in there. Because I've been... I'm super impressed. I got three to try, and they are all excellent dupes. Um, and I've only found one other house that I think do good dupes. 
every other house I've smelled <laughs> that make jute perfumes all smell like tar. Everything smells like tar. So generic and perfume parlor in the UK, I've got some of their stuff to talk about as well. They are the only two dupe houses I've tried that don't just entirely smell like tar. But like I said, these are perfume oils. So I will get back to you when I smell the actual spray and let you know whether the spray compares to this as well as the oil does. But yeah, absolutely delicious. It gives me a really good excuse to wear this perfume on this scent profile all the time because I love it. <laughs> all right i think that's everything guys i've been talking for ages thank you so much for watching my videos and i'll see you next sunday bye